Good morning and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries here at Hannover Fair 2018. I invite you all to sit down here, have a drink, have a coffee and enjoy the next interview. My name is Falco Haag and I will lead you the next 20 minutes uh, through our following talk. And our interview partner will be Mr. Niels Aldag from Sunfire GmbH, 2018 again named in the Global Cleantech 100 one of the world's most innovative energy companies. And Mr. Aldag is their managing director and founder and also responsible for product management in the field of electrolyzers. And he will now speak with us about green hydrogen and CO2 neutral fuels. Please welcome with me, Mr. Aldag. Hi. And to the audience, if you have any specific question during our talk, uh, just raise your hand and join the discussion. Okay, Mr. Aldag, uh, can you please uh, shortly describe what your company is known for and what do you offer? Uh, it's a pleasure. My name is Niels Aldag and uh, my company is basically offering um, or developing and producing a new generation of fuel cells and electrolyzers that are known as solid oxide uh, cell electrolyzers or fuel cells uh, to a broad uh, range of applications and, and industrial fields. Okay, and uh, when and how did Sunfire start to produce green hydrogen? Um, that's a good question. So, uh, Sunfire started the development of its core product, the electrolysis, uh, which, which is called HiLink, um, in 2012. Um, the electrolysis uh, that we have developed is a super efficient, cost effective solid oxide cell electrolysis. And uh, we have scaled the technology up to the megawatt scale from 2012 to today. And uh, we have started producing green hydrogen in uh, first industrial projects uh, around 2014 with one of our key uh, customers, Boeing. And since then, uh, we have realized a multitude of uh, additional customer projects. Okay, uh, uh, sounds like a really wide range. Um, now you call your basic stack the power core. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the difference to other common electrolyzers and how do your customers take advantage of that? Mm -hmm. So in the industry, there are basically three different types of electrolysis technologies. Um, the legacy technologies, alkaline and PEM, that are more familiar to most people. Um, they operate using liquid water and convert this water with electricity into hydrogen and oxygen. Um, the, the first differentiator of our technology is that we're not starting with liquids, but we're starting with gases, so with steam, for example. And uh, by being able to use steam, we can drastically reduce the amount of electrical energy that is needed to go to hydrogen. So the first uh, differentiator that we have is we're capable of using waste streams of energy that are abundant in the industry, for example, in refineries, in steel plants, also in power to X processes. And we convert the steam very efficiently into hydrogen and oxygen. That's the first, uh, the first key. The, the second differentiator is that we have an, a so-called oxygen carrying membrane, which means that we can not only separate oxygen from H2O, so from steam, but we can also inject carbon dioxide into our electrolysis and convert the carbon dioxide and the steam into hydrogen and carbon monoxide. And from there, basically serve any power to X process to uh, replace what today we produce from fossil oil and gas. 
And then, uh, last but not least, uh, the technology is extremely flexible, much, much more flexible than, than many people would think when it comes to high temperature technologies. Uh, so we can actually operate our equipment from zero to 125%. Uh, within minutes, we can shift. Um, and, and that's uh, another uh, differentiating or key factor of this technology. Um, so your cells can not only um, supply hydrogen, but also the syngas, the basis for the later uh, uh, synthetic fuels. Exactly. And this product, so the first one was called Hylink. Mm -hmm. the, the syngas product is called Zynlink. Mm -hmm. um, both products come in 40-foot uh, containers or 20-foot containers, depending on the, on the product range. And um, they serve different purposes. One serves the hydrogen world, the other one the green hydrocarbon world. Okay. And very importantly, because you asked the question earlier on, at the heart of our Hylink or Synlink product is always what we call the power core. And the power core is a stack that is exactly the same whether we have a Hylink or a Synlink. And even if we build fuel cells, which is a third area of, of operation for our company, also in the fuel cell side, we use the same stack to, or in our products. Okay, great. And which sizes and you, which uh, use cases do you differentiate? You already mentioned uh, a waste heat. Does it make sense to use your solid oxide cell even without this uh, waste heat available? Um, so I'll answer the second part first. Um, in the short term, we will focus on applications where steam is available. Uh, so refineries, uh, steel plants, chemical plants, power to liquids, power to gas processes. Because our equipment in the first years will still be more expensive than a traditional alkaline electrolysis. Um, so we have to have the higher efficiency to be able to compete with alkaline and PEM. In the long term, I, I personally believe that solid oxide electrolyzers will become so cheap that uh, they will be able to also compete with alkaline and PEM when starting with liquid water. But the inherent advantage is really the efficiency uh, which comes from the use of steam. So for the beginning, this will be the use cases. And to answer the, um, the first part of the question, um, we have designed a module which is capable of producing about 40 norm cubic meters of hydrogen which is the smallest unit that we sell. And when we want to go to much larger scales, we multiply those units to get to 200, 2,000, 10,000 norm cubic meters of hydrogen or syngas per hour. Per hour, OK. And uh, can you give us some param parameter of a typical use case like operating data or investments in equipment and the projected cost per kilogram hydrogen? This is, um, I think, an important fact. Yeah. Um, so. And unlike what people think in the industry, the solid oxide cell is already much further developed. So we have uh, thousands of hours of operation with extremely low degradation rates. Um, so, so in terms of operation, um, I think people that, that meet Sunfire for the first time are surprised how good the equipment has already become. Uh, now in terms of investments, I mentioned it before, the solid oxide cell is younger produced in smaller quantities and therefore at the moment still a bit more expensive than traditional electrolysis equipment, probably a factor two or three higher than, than an alkaline or a PEM. But we are using steel, glass and ceramics and, and basically producing an electrolyzer is similar to producing a combustion engine. There is no reason why the investment cost should not be able to decrease drastically in a very short period of time. And when it comes to, uh, to hydrogen costs, um, this depends, of course, or strongly on, on the price of electricity in your different use cases. Um, we, I think we are, we are today capable of producing hydrogen at below 7 euro per kilogram with a technology that many people think is still in the lab. So that's already quite a big achievement. Um, I think in the long term, prices will go down even to below 3 euro per kilogram. Uh, in, in regions where electricity is, is cheap. Uh, this can be in Europe. There are a lot of, of locations where electricity is cheap in Europe, but also outside of Europe where hydrogen will be imported. Okay, you already mentioned uh, regions where electric electricity is already cheap. 
Um, I heard that you recently planned a large-scale project. Can you tell us more about that? Um, so I guess you are referring to the project, uh, the, um, the, the, the Power to Liquids project that we are planning in Norway. Um, so first of all, the, maybe to, to pick you up what we are doing there, um, we are teaming up with a Norwegian company. Uh, we will produce hydrogen, they will provide CO2, and both will be transformed into a substitute for crude oil. That's what we are going to do in that project. Um, to do this, we will need about 20 to 30 megawatts of electrolysis, and we will produce about 8,000 tons of crude product in this project. Um, now, this is already a dimension which is quite significant, so the, the time frame, a realistic time frame, is probably start of operation in 2021. Um, the beauty of Norway is that you have wind and, and hydropower capacities, electricity production capacities, Uh, that, that permits uh, a price of around 30 euro per megawatt hour and about 7,000 hours of operation, which in the beginning will be decisive for such projects. And that's why we selected Norway as a first location and a Norwegian partner for this first project. And uh, we're currently in the, in the engineering phase, so uh, advancing very concretely with this project, uh, which we think is going to be a... a a turnaround for the power to liquids industry. Yeah, in Germany the, the, the price is not three euros per megawatt, but I think it's about four to five euro per megawatt hour. What is necessary that such a project can also come to Germany? Um, so, so it's 30 to 40 euro per megawatt hour, but uh, no worries. Um, so. The, the problem in Germany is a bit different. In terms of uh, electricity costs, we are already in Germany at 40 euro per megawatt hour for uh, wind locations, uh, 45 euro per megawatt hour even for solar locations. And hybrid concepts between both would permit electricity costs, which are which would would enable electrolysis business cases. Um, the problem in Germany is different. We have a system of taxes and levies that comes on top of electricity prices, which adds about 60 euro per megawatt hour. And if you start at, at 100 euro per megawatt hour and you have efficiency losses and so on, it's extremely difficult to build a business case which is relevant. So I think the, the first thing that has to be done is we have to look at the system of taxes and levies. Um, in my opinion, we have to pay the full price of electricity generation from renewables, otherwise there is no business case. That's the key important part, number one. The second one is if we are connected to the grid, we have to pay the grid costs. Uh, if you pay for a system, uh, if you use a system, you have to pay for the system. Um, an EEG tariff, for example, I don't think is justified because those plans are not actually adding costs to the EEG, they are actually reducing the costs of EEG. And if you, you reduce the cost of thumb, something, I would question whether it's reasonable to be uh, or to have to pay those uh, fees. So an adaptation of taxes and levies would be helpful to realize business cases in Germany because prices are already low enough in the North Sea and, and in Eastern Germany. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, let's get to the second topic, uh, power to X. Another focus of Sunfire are the synthetic fuels. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the X comprise? Um, so the X stands for the flexibility to produce or replace anything which comes from natural gas or fossil oil. Um, the let's say the synthesis processes that exist today permit a huge variety of products that can be produced. Um, so the X really stands for uh, multiple products that can, can, uh, can be produced. The critical part, very quickly, is that the gases, the, let's say the platform molecules or the platform gas that goes into the power to X process is produced from renewable electricity. And that's what Sunfire is about. And we believe we have an extremely good technology to produce those, uh, those platform molecules, if you will, to then go into power to x processes. Okay, and now a little bit tricky. Uh, why converting this electricity uh, um, direct, uh, not, um, I mean, why, 
why should we convert it uh, to synthetic fuels? I mean, uh, batteries, for example, are available right now. Yeah. Um, so batteries are available, and they are actually uh, a great solutions in many applications in the energy field. So absolutely no problem with batteries, actually the opposite. Um, but if you look at the energy market overall, the part that you can electrify directly is actually fairly small. And the rest that today is being provided by crude oil and natural gas, chemical molecules, um, gases for the reduction of, of iron, um, uh, the, the fuels that are used by planes and ships and so on, yeah. this is what you cannot replace with a battery and that's where power to X or power to gas or hydrogen technologies will play a significant role and will, that's very important, in my opinion become the biggest trend in the energy industry, probably bigger than batteries, probably similar to, to what we have seen in the solar and in the wind industry. Okay, I think every one of us are, is waiting for this trend to begin right now. Um, and uh, what for your company is more interesting to produce uh, fuels for, for example, planes on ships or the road transport or on the other hand, the chemical industry? Um, so, so the great thing about those technologies is that it's a no reg an investment into an electrolysis is a no regret measure. Um, you can use an electrolyzer to, in the beginning, produce a fuel for road transport. We still have 250 million cars on, on European roads, and for the next 20 to 30 years, they will play a substantial role. So we have to find solutions to provide more green energy to those existing cars. Now, if we actually manage to convert the entire tr uh, person transportation into electric mobility and into hydrogen mobility, which of course would be a great scenario, you can use exactly the same equipment to produce fuels and gases for planes, chemical industry and so on. Great. So, the, the, the key question is, where does regulation already exist? Where will be the first markets? That's where you have to start, and for me, passenger transport is one important block to begin with. And then, over time, we will shift to the applications where electricity cannot be used directly. Okay, thank you for this outlook. Uh, time is almost ran, ra already running. Uh, I have several uh, uh, more questions, but I want to give the chance to the audience. Um, I think... Um, this is really interesting to continue at your booth and everyone uh, who wants to uh, discuss on that further uh, is invited to booth number C46 where Mr. Aldag and Sunfire GmbH can be found. And yeah, thank you very much for this really interesting interview and thanks the audience for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.